welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we can see with our uh, distributor from CRT Performance. Get the uh, documentation there. Pro Series ready to run installation. Just a very basic block diagram of the install. We have three different mechanical advanced curves, gold springs, silver springs, and black springs. I poked into the box earlier and I noticed that the silver springs and the black springs were in the little packet and the gold springs were nowhere to be found. So this is the pictograph for the gold springs. I asked the uh, manufacturer, you know, what's the deal with that? And they said, don't worry about it. It's ready to run right out of the box. Put it in there and go. I'm like, okay, fine. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause you know, you hear like, oh, if you have, you know, X cam and this and that and the other, blah, 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 all up in your engine. You know, you don't, you want this curve or that curve. You don't want this and that and the other thing, that, whatever. So he said, put it in the motor. So that's what I'm gonna do. According to this, uh, this graph here with these gold springs, your mechanical advance due to the uh, advance mechanism will go up to just shy of 20 degrees by the time you are at right at 2500 rpm and then with the silver springs it goes up to the same level of advance but at a slower rate and it you have to go until you get just shy of 4000 rpm to get there and with the black springs you have to go up here to 5500 this engine is bone stock. It will probably never get revved to 4,000 RPM or beyond. I think 4,000 is probably the end of the world, 45, something like that. I mean, unless they're, you know, modified, of course. Apparently the gold springs are in the thing. We're gonna slap it in there and go. We have a bag of goodies here. This is the, uh, the little wiring harness that will go between the distributor and the um, coil. And we also have, we have one of the, we have this. I don't know what that is. It looks like an arm of some sort, probably for the manipulation of the advanced mechanism in some fashion. I have no idea. And I have these three bushings here. Okay, that's an advanced stop bushing. Depending upon the color of, it, of the advanced stop bushing, basically they're just little barrels. There's a silver one. There's a little gold one, brass, I guess. And then there's a black one. You can put these advanced stops in here. I guess maybe maybe this arm is goes along with that. <laughs> there, to be honest with you, there aren't any instructions in here to tell you how to manipulate this stuff. Although putting the springs in can't be that hard. I mean, I've done it before, but anyway. So I think I guess if you put the various bushings in. So if you put a black in with the gold springs, you can put a advanced stop at say. 12 or 13 degrees. If you put the gold one in, you're going to stop it at uh, looks like 17 and a half. I'm assuming I'm reading that right. Uh, there isn't, like I said, there isn't a whole lot of information there other than you just being able to read a graph and interpret the data. Me looking at this uh, thing for the very first time. So. All right, so let's look at the meat of the matter. And here is our brand new uh, CRT performance distributor and I would say that the quality is you know just for me just looking at it appears to be excellent the uh, the distributor gear is of course properly shimmed I see two shims here and it, there's no play in it or it's very smooth very precise acting has a gasket here for mounting on the engine and here's a, uh, a typical style uh, weather protected GM type connector there. And then another wire, have no idea what that wire is for. We'll find out. Then here's your vacuum advance can with a little red stopper over that. So I'm not gonna change anything in this distributor, but I am just gonna take the cap off and let you guys look at it. Let's see. I'm not going to pretend I know what every bit of these little doohickeys does, but uh, that's the reluctor wheel, right? 
for each of the pistons and as it passes by the uh, the sensor uh, it tells the thing when to fire and then of course here's your uh, your vacuum advance arm here so with a little bit of vacuum this pulls that way this is your vacuum advance adjustment here so this little wheel will get pulled that way to adjust the uh, ignition advance I'm not going to take this thing apart the weights in the springs clearly are underneath the cap and uh, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fiddle with that. You guys have probably taken the cap off a distributor before, and seen the uh, mechanical advanced springs. Uh, if you haven't, just get on YouTube and search for it, because I'm sure there are 18,000 million that show you how a distributor works. So I just but I just wanted to show you if I can get the cap back on. <laughs> what this thing looks like. Maybe it's backwards. Have you thought of that? Flipping around on me. Where's my screwdriver? Use the screwdriver, dummy. Anyway, we'll have to take the cap back off anyway when we install the thing. The rotor will have to be pointing in the same direction as the one that we pull out of the vehicle, clearly. So, all right, let's go ahead and get it on the car. All right, we got our breather off and I got some painter's tape out and uh, numbered all of my plug wires because I don't like guesswork. If you don't know, the firing order on one of these motors is, is one, five, six, three, four, two, seven, eight. So anyway, number one is right there. And uh, let's see how you do this. Uh, the battery's been disconnected. Uh, we are gonna replace the coil as well. So we'll go ahead and disconnect our wire going to the uh, little filter capacitor up here. That's for the radio. I'm gonna retain the stock mounting stuff to make it look original. Look original, that is. So this little guy goes over here to the uh, compressor and we'll disconnect our negative side going to the distributor there. Oh, it's an 1130 seconds. What, why, why? I don't know. And then here's our power coming in. Of course, the uh, with this being a modern electronic system, the uh, the resistor wire will be eliminated from this whole setup. So I'll show you how we're going to do that here in a little bit. And then that little pigtail goes to the uh, filter capacitor up there. So just so I don't forget that, I'm going to tighten that back down so I know precisely where that goes. And let's go ahead and get that coil off of there next. And these are half inch. The uh, third gear switch, vacuum advance lockout, and the anti-dieseling solenoid have been removed from this car. I've got them in a box, so I've got all the original stuff. So if anybody wanted to, if I, if, if I ever sold it and you know somebody wanted to r retain the originality, we could do that, so no big deal. All right, let's go ahead and get our wires off here. Come on now, don't be. Okay, I'll let you wait. Some of these are gonna be just stubborn, I think. These stock wires can be a little cantankerous. Goodness gracious. A lot of them are gonna be difficult. I need one of those pair of pliers you pull plug wires with. That's what I need. Okay, I'm gonna struggle with this for about 10 minutes. So I don't wanna pull the, I don't wanna yank the ends off my plug wires. So let me gingerly finagle this. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, a little bit of uh, finagling here. Just got the cap off and just trying to be gentle. These are AC Delco made in the USA wires. They're practically brand new and I didn't want to damage them. I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's just me. They're really nice. So, and, and it, it's, no, I'm not gonna put Excel wires on my car. That is the dumbest thing I have ever heard of in my entire life. Oh, here's a product that you have to put together because we can make more money on it if you put it together instead of us. That's just so stupid. And then folks think they're getting something really good when they're getting crap. All right, rant over. We are pointing at number six, by the way. I always make a little line or a pointer or something where this thing is pointing, you know, so I can, you know, get, a, get an eyeball on it so I know exactly where it was pointing, you know, when I reinstall it or install the new one. So I'm gonna use some blue tape I know this looks a little ridiculous, but basically what now I have is a, is a line. 
And I'll take this tape and what I'm doing is I'm wrapping it around my uh, power steering and compressor belt. Basically, the little edge of that tape is in a line with that um, rotor button. All right, if you haven't loosened the distributor on one of these cars before, uh, there is a half inch nut on a threaded shaft poking out of the engine and there's a hold down bracket on it and there's a, that, hold down, that hold down bracket basically just looks like that and it grabs onto the base of the distributor and it's kind of hard to see. You look straight in down here and what I always use is I use a quarter inch drive with a nice extension like this. I got a 3 8 inch ratchet with a 3 8 to 1 quarter inch adapter on it a long extension, then I have a quarter inch swivel on this end and a uh, quarter inch drive, one half inch socket. And that seems to work out perfectly. Now I'm gonna switch over to a, uh, just basically a nut driver here uh, because you have to loosen it with the, uh, the ratchet because it's, well, you know, it's tight, so. And that should, yep, there we go. All right, so the uh, advance uh, of the distributor, uh, you know, you want to get a good eyeball on that. And I've got a, I've already marked this distributor in a couple of places, and I know where this, this vacuum pod, you know, I, I know where it points, basically. <laughs> so I can, I can get it in there in the right orientation when we reinstall it, so. All right, let's go ahead and yank that out of there next and uh, see about getting the new one in place. But before we do that, we have one little other task that we need to accomplish before we put the new one in. All right, so what we're going to do is install a new engine coolant uh, temperature controlled uh, vacuum switch for the ignition advance. So what this guy does, if you don't know, there it's right here on the end of the block on the end of the head actually. This is a safety device of sorts. It prevents or tries to help prevent the engine from overheating during periods where you're idling for a long amount of time. You have heavy traffic, excessive temperatures, things like that. So your ignition vacuum coming off your port, your ported port on the carburetor will go here and will pass through uh, during normal engine operating temperatures. It'll pass through and go to the distributor and you will operate on ported vacuum anytime that the engine temperature doesn't reach say about 220 or 230 degrees. Now if the engine temperature does get that hot, uh, this little switch in here, this, this is up inside the, the head inside the coolant and this little switch right here will, will flip over and it, it will flip over to the other vacuum port, which will be going to the full manifold vacuum port on the intake manifold. So that will give you full intake manifold vacuum and that will cool the uh, engine down. Anytime you, you run a full intake manifold vacuum for your ignition advance all the time, uh, especially at idle, the engine is going to run cooler. It just, it's just the way, it's just the nature of the beast. So basically this is an engine over temp protection device. Uh, the one on the engine does not function at all. It's completely trashed because it's, I'm assuming it's original to 1971. We're going to change it out and I've got a one and a quarter inch wrench. And I expect to lose some coolant because this is coming straight off of the, I didn't want to take the distributor out for fear that some of the coolant might drop down and never mind. <laughs> So, come on, there we go, there we go. It moved without any fuss, how about that? Oh, something popped off of there. Where are your safety goggles? I don't know. <laughs> so the, uh, the plastic end, one of the ports broke off after it bumped into the uh, <laughs> distributor because I wasn't watching, because I'm an idiot. But there's plenty of room for it to spin now. After we broke it. I've replaced one of these before on some other car. I can't remember which one it was though. It might have been my Coupe de Ville, my 81 Coupe de Ville. This is excitement like I've never experienced before in my entire life. Let's see if we can get our fingers down in there. 
my idea was to remove this from the engine before I took the distributor out. But as it comes out, the little plastic bits get in the way of the distributor, or the distributor gets in the way. And I'm just being super stupid idiot paranoid because I don't want, I don't know how much engine coolant is up there. I fully expect some coolant there. See, there it comes. And it's gonna run on the floor. Just go on out. Just get all over the floor. That wasn't too bad. Probably half a cup or something. So that's what the original one looks like. Clearly I'm gonna have to put the new one on after I get the, uh, the distributor out. So up next, let's do that. And let's uh, not forget to remove our vacuum hose to the advanced unit. These vacuum lines just, with a little bit of heat, they just weld themselves to everything. And that little um, hold down bracket will make your life miserable. And that's what it looks like right there. Bolts to the engine like that. And this guy here holds the, back, the uh, distributor down. There we go. There's our original breaker points distributor right there. Such a sad day. See an old part like this go out of commission. All right, out with the old, in with the new. See ya, wouldn't wanna be ya. You know, I just realized something. The new cap looks like this with the little stud sticking up. The old cap looks like that. Clearly they take two different kinds of plug wires. So I had it in my head. I was like, well, could you not put this original cap on the new distributor? I mean, it's just a cap. And this one's basically new, unfettered, undamaged, unscorched, made in USA. The points uh, door, or sliding door, kind of gets in the way, but I could take that little piece of metal and kind of bend it over. And then, of course, my stock uh, AC Delco plugs would fit on this. So if I go with the new cap, I've got to swap my plugs out because they just, they just don't fit. So I got a message into the manufacturer to see what they say. So uh, I think really what I'm going to do is wait until I hear back from them. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and install this new uh, thermal uh, switch for the ignition advance. The uh, threads on the end of the uh, head look unfettered. These are pipe threads too, so we shouldn't really need any, uh, you know, pipe dope or sealant or anything like that. So as long as we get this, and that kind of twists too, the plastic part kind of twists inside there. I'm assuming that's by design so that you can put this thing in here and get your ports lined up appropriately. So my question is, how much oomph do we want to put on this thing? Just keep doing it until you strip it, Harris. Well, yeah, that tightened up pretty good there. You know what? I think I'm going to call that good. I'm going to choke down on the wrench. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to leave that there. If it leaks, I'll just tighten it up a little more. All right, so I'm going to leave that there. Wait for the feedback uh, from the manufacturer on the cap. You know, I think you guys understand what I'm talking about here, right? So I got some good old USA made AC Deco wires. I, I bought these a number of years ago, but they only, they only have like 5,000 miles on them. They're in perfect condition. The ends are just different and they don't fit that new cap. And if I put my old cap on this new distributor and it's in fantastic shape anyway, you retain the stock look, kind of a big deal to me. Uh, you know, some things I don't really care too much about retaining the stock look, but for the most part, I do. I'm gonna wait till the manufacturer comes back and says either yay or nay on that, and then uh, we'll make a call. So, but for you guys, it'll be immediately. All right, let's go ahead and get our uh, distributor down in there. Put a little uh, fresh motor oil on that. I uh, broke down and had to buy a new set of uh, plug wires. I'm buying them from uh, CRT Performance on the website that claims they're made in USA. Bottom line is uh, the old distributor has the female type uh, ports on it and the new distributor has the male type. These wires go to the female, so that won't work. Plus, these are seven millimeter wires. And you need at least eight millimeter wires 
to work with an HEI ignition system. So I really wanted to keep these wires because they're really nice, but they just won't work with this. So we need to upgrade the wires. So I ordered a new set. So anyway, is what it is. Now let's see if we can go ahead and get this thing installed. When you slip one of these down in there, you want to get this uh, distributor gear lined up, which can be a little tricky. There's a slot in the end and it fits in the little groove down below. And the uh, distributor and the uh, vacuum advance kind of points off that way. Kind of basically it points towards the carburetor, which is, you know, fitting, I guess. Now this, uh, the rotor button is gonna need to point towards number six when we're done, but you gotta bring it back counterclockwise some to compensate for the helical nature of the uh, distributor gears. All right, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get, really. Of course, this distributor is completely different from the old one in that it, it only vaguely resembles it, but I got my line here and uh, kind of points in the same direction. It doesn't really matter, as long as we uh, understood that this was pointing to six when we pulled it out, so, you know, we'll be good to go. We just wire it up in that fashion. Tighten that down. I can't do a whole lot more uh, unless I have some plug wires. So right now, that's what we're doing. Uh, be a couple more days. All right, it's several days later, and I decided to stop uh, fighting the spark plug wire originality battle. And I called CRT, told them what I wanted, got a new wire set. Uh, CRT842BK, I guess that means black, and had these out of the bag earlier. And just like the distributor, I would say the quality is exquisite. Uh, it's really, really nice, actually. Uh, USA Ignition, 8 millimeter high performance suppression cable, made in the USA. And there you go. Brand new spark plug wire set for the old Cadillac here. And these will fit over the, uh, the male end uh, connectors on the uh, distributor. Let me go ahead and get these uh, plugged in, and then we'll move on with the rest of the project. All right, we've got our wires routed. I still need to get a, uh, a little wire management on this side. It's a little long, I think. Uh, I think if I get a plug uh, tie down here, situated somewhere in this neighborhood, I think it'll look a little better. And the uh, passenger side seems to have come along pretty well as well. Uh, up next, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, newly painted uh, distributor hold down put back in place. That turned out pretty well. All right, that's what the new one looks like. Again, I was going to try to reuse the old cap but uh, and the old wires, but uh, that plan fell through quickly. <laughs> uh, and there's the, uh, the stud right down there where the hold down bracket goes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and install that next. And then I think we'll go ahead and uh, put the coil on. All right, here's what we got so far. So here's the wiring harness from the distributor. Uh, this is the tachometer. So this will be looped around and tucked out of the way out of sight, I guess. Not gonna have a tack. So this pink wire here is the resistor wire and the yellow wire is from the starter. Uh, when, you're, when you've got the key on and you're starting the engine, you get 12 volts from the uh, starter here on the yellow wire to the coil. Once you let off and the, the engine cranks, then you're gonna run on power from the resistor wire, which gives you around seven or eight volts, something like that. I can't recall what the exact number is because the coil on a points ignition system only needs about seven or eight volts. And uh, otherwise you'll burn the points out. Anyway, but we're not gonna use that anymore. That's, this setup is gonna go away. All right, roll back. We are ready to test fire the old Cadillac with the new CRT distributor and coil. And I opted for a uh, relay style uh, system for the uh, coil uh, power as opposed to digging into this wiring down here on the uh, on the firewall 
I'm not digging into that. That's too much trouble. You might break something. That's that's hands off. So, uh, so I opted for a relay, and this is what we got. All right. So the pink wire right there, now brown, used to be pink. That's the resistor wire. Okay, and that goes over to a relay, which I have precariously placed on the fender over there. I'll go ahead and put a schematic of the the whole setup in the video right here. And what we'll do, I think what I'm going to do here is uh, want, this relay, it comes with a little mounting tab. It's a 30 amp. I think I want to put it right here. There's a hole here and I can take that relay and I can put it right there and I can hide all these wires. And the ground wire will, uh, will come out this hole here or maybe go, well, maybe let's see. The ground wire will maybe snake down through there and then come back up around the other side. And then the hot wire will go through here. And um, I think we can hide it pretty well to sort of disguise the, the modern aspect of what we're doing here. So to briefly review on a points ignition, the yellow wire came from the starter, sends 12 volts to the coil only during starting. Once you let off the key, that, that goes away. The pink wire uh, continues to take over as the primary source of power for the coil. But in this sense, we're using the pink wire as the turn on signal to the relay and the real power is going to come from the battery. All right, hopefully that's uh, clear as mud. So let's go ahead and fire this old Cadillac up. All right, I spared you the comedy. I did a test fire on the engine with our setup and I had it way too advanced and got a bam, got a nice backfire out of the uh, carburetor. So that was pretty comical. Once I got it fired up, checked it with the timing light, it was way up there and I got it down to about eight degrees above top dead center and uh, tightened down the distributor. So motor runs fine. It's idles great. Uh, it seems to be quite smooth, but you know, we've got a brand new distributor in here. So there's some tuning that's going to be involved. But from the initial assessment, I would say uh, it's running really, really well. All right, up next, uh, I'm going to start to uh, fine tune all this wiring. And uh, the, I'm going to start with the power. Uh, I've got the ground disconnected clearly. But um, we're going to take power right off here off the alternator. Since we've got this big old honking wire that comes off of the uh, battery, I don't really want to put wires on the battery. I mean, there's already one going to the alternator. And anyway, that, that's enough. I got a uh, ring connector on this new wire here. And we're going to make this guy follow the uh, existing wire going to the battery. It'll veer off right here over to the area where we're going to put our uh, relay. All right, so up next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some sense out of this rat's nest. All right, it's a couple days later. I'm 97.2% done. Uh, the other small percentage is simply cleanup work. But functionally, we are complete. Let me show you what we got. So the uh, relay stuff is over in this area. And I got my corrugated wiring loom right there, which if I had a nice little spring-loaded uh, clip with a little loop on it to hold that in there. That'd be completely invisible. But uh, that's what we have. I may, I may, I'm concerned about heat with this. So that's the reason I put it over here. Um, I may get some of that sticky um, silverish insulation tape from the parts house and uh, put a couple of strips here and there to keep the heat off of that. So I don't know. We'll see what it goes. Um, so, and the ground, I have it connected to the ground here. I'm not really crazy about the yellow. So I, uh, I just went straight here because it was really, really easy. And I may, I may take the ground. I may take this bolt out here. I don't know. This is kind of structural. I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to have to find a different place for the ground. I'm going to change that. Uh, but for now it's okay. It works. All right, so we got some corrugated uh, wiring loom kind of snaking down through here, coming across here, following the line of the original hot wire from the alternator or from the battery to the alternator. And we uh, got the power from the uh, for the relay to right here to the alternator. And then our uh, wires to the coil uh, proceeds forward uh, through the uh, wiring loom underneath the uh, compressor and comes out right here. Uh, I've got the yellow wire. Uh, where is it at? I've got the yellow wire kind of tucked down in there. That's the one that came from the starter. I've got it doubled up and got some heat, sh uh, heat shrink around it so it can't 
you know, electrify anything. And there's the pink wire uh, going over to the relay. That turns on the relay. And here's the wire coming back from the relay. Um, so this little uh, blade connector came with this coil. It was over here, uh, but I removed it and put it over here. And I put a blade connector on there. It seemed to, you know, work out pretty well. It's convenient. I can just unplug it whenever I want. Um, and then, of course, the uh, distributor ground goes to here where the radio capacitor is. And I, you know, I left the radio capacitor uh, connected as well. Here's the tachometer wire. It comes from the bottom of the distributor. I've just kind of got it tie wrapped up right there. Just kind of tuck it out of the way and uh, keep it kind of out of sight. But if I need to, I can get to it. Uh, and the wiring harness for the distributor, I've got it kind of wrapped around the, uh, the distributor. And it's kind of out of sight, so that's you know trying to pre I'm trying to prevent you know basically a, a rat's nest of wiring. Too late, right? <laughs> um, so we've got the uh, the brand new um, thermal vacuum switch on the on the head here. Now the labeling on these thermal vacuum switches is a hit or miss. It may or may not be correct, and it wasn't in my case. So I basically just had to test the ports with a vacuum gauge to figure out which one I needed to connect to the intake manifold uh, full vacuum. And that's the one closest to the engine on the, in this particular case, maybe different for one you buy. But uh, this line here goes all the way back to that full manifold vacuum port over there. And then of course the other two, uh, one goes to the ported vacuum on the carburetor and the other one goes to the, uh, clearly to the vacuum advance on the distributor. But uh, I've already taken the car for a test drive and uh, seems to run really well. Uh, <laughs> no complaints. I mean, the performance is great. Uh, the power delivery is way, way smoother than it was. Uh, there is no off idle stumble any longer. In other words, you just just come off idle, just, just tick off idle. With that points ignition, it always fell on its face just for a microsecond. It was really annoying. And with this electronic setup, the power delivery is from idle, from a dead stop, all the way through the range, just perfect. Ultimately, did we solve the annoying jiggleness or the jiggly nature of this engine at idle, at a red light, with your foot on the brake? The answer to the question is mm, probably no, I don't think we did. I, ultimately, I think that's going to be an internal engine problem. And I think I've come to the conclusion that what I'm trying to do is make a a uh, 52-year-old engine with 100,000 miles on it run like a brand new one. Well, that's pretty silly. <laughs> so it's probably a flaky uh, lifter. You know, maybe the lifters need to be taken out and cleaned out a little bit. Maybe I need, I don't know, slightly longer push rods here and there. Uh, you know, maybe one or two of the cylinders isn't quite up to snuff as it used to be. Maybe the engine just needs a refresh. But regardless... The thing runs, it runs beautifully. So would I recommend this particular distributor and coil setup to anybody with one of these engines? Absolutely. It is fantastic. When you put your timing light on it, it's like rock solid. I mean, it is pow, it is spot on. It's boom. It's amazing. I've been running the car earlier, about 15 minutes. So I guess you might call this a hot start. I'm just going to hit the ignition key. Yeah, that engine is way, way, way smoother than it used to be. Just really nice. Yeah, that is pretty special. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Sitting in heavy traffic. Not that you enjoy doing such a thing like that in a, a classic car, but it happens a lot. Mostly because I think the uh, pure gasoline station is way over here across the uh, interstate. Anyway, so sitting here with your foot on the brake, stopped. You know, you can watch my thumb right there. And this, the engine just has a jiggle to it. There's, there's something internally wrong with it. Uh, some, some, I don't know, a lifter, a, a ring, something. It's just, you know, it should just go... Doom, 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 you know, just perfect, right? But nope, it just 
dun dun you know it just does that anyway so the ignition replacement did not fix that problem clearly uh which is unfortunate i thought you know i was hoping it would and clearly the thinking was there if it didn't fix it then you know the next thing i got to do is dive into the motor which probably won't happen for quite a while and i'll just have to live with it so anyway i'm gonna head on over here to the uh pure gasoline station because we don't want any ethanol in our old Cadillac. Sweet home. Let's go ahead and finish up our video. <sighs> well, I guess we'll uh, say goodbye. I'm assuming this is original to the car. It says Delco Remy on the coil. Delco Remy. I'm assuming that's original to 71295B-R. That's a museum piece. We're going to keep that, clearly. Here's the old points distributor. I mean, it's still in, uh, you know, fairly good shape, but it's worn, clearly, because there's a lot of jiggle to this thing. Yep, that'll go in the, uh, the forever box for the new owner that maybe will one day want to return the car back to its originality. A good... Uh, Points distributor cap, AC Delco, made in the USA, in perfect condition. None of which mattered. <laughs> uh, none of that stuff mattered at all. Um, also, the uh, plug wires. Let's see, let's, let's, let's not leave these out. AC Delco, made in the USA, 7 millimeter um, points ignition capable only, clearly, uh, plug wires. These will go in a box. They're keepers, but it's time to say goodbye to the old and hello to the new. I tell you what, I really do enjoy this new distributor, this high energy ignition system from CRT Performance. I really think it's a great product. And apparently everything in it, it was made in the USA and it was a great value. I, you know, for $200, that's what it cost me. It cost me 200 bucks. I got a brand new set of made in USA plug wires. I got a coil and I got a distributor. The directions were a little lacking. I, you know, usually, you know, a pamphlet might be good, but I got like two pieces of paper, which, okay, that's good enough. I mean, you can ask around and get all the information you need. So there's no big, that's no big deal. However, I would have thought maybe a little pamphlet with four or five pages in it would have been appropriate. I'll have to say this video was a little bit of a challenge for me because I was, uh, uh, down and out for about a couple of weeks there, so I was in bad shape, but I'm back in the saddle now. It looks like we are approaching a really good point with this Cadillac. The drivetrain, boom, done. Vibration is gone. In the video you saw where I gave it full throttle, it was uh, full throttle in second gear starting at around 30 or 40 miles an hour. Um, and we kind of let it go up to about 60. I was in a low speed zone, so I didn't want to go any further than that. But my, my only point there was to hit full throttle and put as much torque on the rear end as I possibly could. And I had not done that until that time. And my goal was to test, to really see if we had truly eliminated the uh, pinion angle uh, torque vibration issue in the rear end and it was gone it did not exist it's completely fixed and i'm pretty happy about that we're sitting on about eight degrees of timing uh, the base timing is at eight so with this new ignition setup i'm going to tweak it a little bit i'm going to bump it to 10 take it out take it for a test drive and see what that'll do uh just kind of want to optimize the performance M maybe get a little couple extra ponies out of it might make it ping i don't know but you know we'll dial it in the the next thing i want to do to this car is rebuild the air conditioning system because boy howdy it needs it uh we're going to go with r134 that's my plan so unless somebody says something different to sway me that's what i'm going to go with all right the ignition project is over with i appreciate you guys stopping by the channel don't forget to like 
share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. That'll really help me out a whole lot, okay? I really would appreciate it. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy driving your classic Cadillac.